So I, w- I went to the University of Portsmouth. Um, in regards to the support after post-graduation in terms of which roles, I'd say from a careers department point of view, not so much. Um, that aspect was more given to the, our lecturers who kind of drove home to us the, the main reason about, oh, sorry, the importance of securing a, um, a pre-registration in either community or hospital. The way that they had communicated everything within the whole job space or like life after um, studying pharmacy is that you go on to be a pharmacist and work in either hospital or community. Uh, they didn't really touch on other aspects that you could actually potentially go down or other roads that you could, other paths, sorry, that you could follow. So um, I did speak to a few lecturers on a one-to-one basis to kind of understand, for example, in the pharmaceutical industry, is there, what, what options are there? Is there anything that you, you, know, you could help me out with or you could point me in the right direction to or give me a flavor or a sense of what I could potentially do there? Um, and a lot of it was centered, centered around being, uh, working in the lab, um, and working, on, working in the lab, um, like a formulation scientist was, uh, came up. Uh, but one thing I did notice, having now been in a pharmaceutical country, is there's a huge lack of awareness and understanding of what other routes there are available in the pharmaceutical industry. And having met other pharmacists who have who are in the pharmaceutical industry has really helped to reaffirm that for me and, make, and really highlight how big of an issue it is because they've all had a very, they've had, they found it one very hard to get into the pharmaceutical industry, and two. Um, they also get they once they get in they have this realization like wow they're not more pharmacists in the pharmaceutical industry why is it so hard um, why is there why do not many people know about these options why is the university why during our university years is it so um, so 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 hard driven towards hospital or community what about the other aspects and the other areas of, of the whole drug development or the whole healthcare piece that we could in my second year sorry at the end of my second year, I was looking for like a summer placement or what I could do to help give me some experience to get into the pharmaceutical industry, just anything. And I went to my careers department and they, they, didn't, have, they didn't have many many contacts or options within that. And they kind of referred me on to my supervisors and my lecturers who were helpful, but they were helpful with the more popular ones. So for example, the big names, you know, GSK, AstraZeneca, Pfizer at the time, they, they were all running placements for various students over the summer. Um, and outside of those, they, didn't, they weren't aware of what, what other options there were. Or, um, so, they, so a lot of it was kind of just like, you know, you're, I felt like I was sort of left on my own or left to who I know. Um, so what I did is I went home and I was just, you know, typing in Google, pharmaceutical industry, whatever, and submit my, my CV to a lot of these um, online platforms. And one day in the summer, I got a call and they were like, oh yeah, I saw your CV on this on my website, blah, blah, blah. We've got a role, do you want to come in and have a have a chat, an interview? I was, like, I was like, okay, yeah, sure. When? They're like, tomorrow. I was like, okay, all right, let me, you know, quickly run, quickly get my, you know, my suit game up, you know. Um, headed over to, uh, so I, I went to university in Portsmouth. The role was near Southampton. So I made my way there, went to the interview. Um, it, was, it wasn't even an interview, it was more like a chat uh, where they gave me a bit of an understanding about what they do, uh, what their company is, what they do, um, how they work, what their experience was, how they got to where they were, which was quite inspiring because one of the two managing directors was a pharmacist and hearing his journey, what he had done over the years, uh, where he had worked and how it had helped to feed into now him developing his own company and going on and working, um, working with that. Um, was quite was 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 quite it was an eye opener and, and inspiring because a lot because the typical stories I was used to hearing was go and be a community pharmacist go and be a hospital pharmacist so it, it was it was kind of nice to hear something very very different. Um, I got the job. Hey. I went and did it for three months over the summer. Doing that job gave me a, a real insight to the potential that the pharmaceutical industry holds because it was a very small company. Um, the teams were not very big. Um, I could literally just walk over and talk to the manager director or walk over and talk to the head of sales or the head of marketing or the head of finance and vice versa. Um, it kind of gave me a bit more of a flavor from that side, from a small company side and understanding, okay, this is how it is in a small company. Um, in a bigger company, what was it? Well, it, it must be, you know, even better. So <clears throat> halfway through my training year, I realized I don't want to be a hospital pharmacist. <laughs> I'm like, I don't want to do this anymore. Nah.
but um, it's in my best interest to finish off the year, pass the exam, and then reevaluate re my options. So what I started doing halfway through the year is I started making applications to the pharmaceutical industry uh, in various roles. So I explored the regulatory affairs, medical information, drug safety, and pharmacovigilance as well. So just regularly applying to those roles from about February up until maybe about June. Um, I didn't get very far. Had a, had a few telephone interviews, but no face-to-face -face interviews. Um, then I concentrated on my exam, passed my exam, and then um, I thought, okay, I didn't really enjoy it during the training year. Let me actually do it as a pharmacist and see if there's any difference. Maybe I might prefer it more, having a bit more autonomy. So I did it for six months. I gave myself like a sort of a target that, you know, if, if by six months you're still not enjoying it, you're going to have to switch things up and um, keep trying. I was gonna, what I was planning to do is I was going to work, I was going to locum until I eventually got into the pharmaceutical industry. I was going to keep applying until I get into it um, because um, I understood that but from other people I'd spoken to it, who had gotten in, it was one of those things that you keep knocking at the door until somebody opens. And it could take a couple of weeks, it could take a couple of months, it could take a year or two, who knows. But as long as you keep persisting, one day somebody has to let you in. That's the idea. Well, that's what I was telling myself every morning anyway. So as I was getting to the sixth month and I was about to, um, I just handed in my notice to say, yeah, that's it, it's done. We're not doing this anymore. This relationship is over. Um, I had applied to a job at a pharmaceutical company and uh, it was which was in medical affairs and it was a junior role which I think was quite new to them at the time and um, I got it well I had an I got an interview sorry uh, I went to the so I finished working at the, hosp at the hospital went to the interview and then a few days after that I got the job so oh, it's happened so fast this is great the role that I got was a scientific advisor a junior scientific advisor So the things that helped me to kind of get the role, that role um, were, <clears throat> they were particularly interested in the fact that I'd done the Erasmus. They really liked that. Um, the fact that I'd gone to another country, um, done, uh, you know, country by myself, um, lived there for, I think I did it for about four months. Um, had to learn a new culture, make new friends, um, as well as also, you know, you're going and you're doing um, your uh, finally a dissertation so you're doing experiments you're having to communicate with people in, in a lab who don't who english is not their first language so they really did they really did like that in terms of the raw elements of it i think is what they appreciated as well that's what they told me during the interview um they liked the fact that i'd, I'd had some experience um well i had a three-month placement in um, another company during my training year um around May time, when I'd realized that I wanted to move into the pharmaceutical industry I saw, and I wanted to do medical affairs, I w I'd realized I wanted to do medical affairs um, the latter end of my training year. Um, I had actually reached out to a few people on LinkedIn to, in the hope of shadowing them. And uh, one guy, one particular guy um, got back to me, asked if um, him and my friend could also go and, to which he was fine. <laughs> he said, uh, he can give us two days if you just come see me. Um, he'll talk through what he does, what his role, uh, how his role works, how it fits in the pharmaceutical industry and what the skills are. So one day was focused around what he does day to day. Um, and then the second day was focused around what skills are needed to do the role. So what the core skills. So the skills he took us through were um, being able to read a clinical paper and, act, and sort of dissect it. So critically appraising the paper, um, being able to present to, um, to doctors, to nurses, to patients. So being sort of, and uh, people internally, so being able to tailor scientific information to whichever, whoever your audience is. Um, being able to do things like uh, literature search or pub PubMed search, um, being uh, understanding from a commercial and strategic point of view, um, how to so strategic uh, strategic thinking. So, for example, let's say you have a product that you know is the last. There's already five other products like that. How can you? What can you do to help? Let like you know improve the launch of that product when it's coming to the market. How can you? So uh, during my GCSEs, I actually wanted to be an architect. Um, so I, <laughs> I had actually done a few things like gra graphic design and um, uh, another design and technology course called um, computer aided design, computer aided design, um, as well as triple science, uh, maths, English, 
citizenship, IT, French, and business. Um, so I'd kind of done those core ones, but also I was angling my my career journey towards architecture. Um, and then, actually, architecture or civil engineering, I was a bit undecided. When I did, then after finishing GCSEs and getting my results, and then over the summer, sort of looking into different career paths, I realised I didn't actually like the I, I didn't I, yeah, it didn't really appeal to me being an architect or being a civil engineer. So then I changed to medicine. Um, so my top tip would definitely be um, tenacious, be determined, be driven. Just keep knocking on the door. Don't give up. Um, my recommended, my practical advice would be definitely explore the route of apply, um, messaging people on LinkedIn um, who do particular areas or do particular careers that you want to do. A lot of people are happy to, you know, even if it's a if it's a chat over the phone or if it's just a message, it's just a back and forth message over the um, LinkedIn Messenger. A lot of people are happy to drop some gems on you and on what you can do and how they can help or what you could do to you know help get to where they are. Um, other the other thing I would look to really try and do is book some time in shadowing, even if it's just a day, what it, what it shows, what to you it might just seem it's just one day, oh my God, what is that? But to the person that's interviewing you, that shows that you're keen, that you're, you're trying to go above and beyond what, you can, what you're already doing to try and really get that experience. So that could be the difference between you, somebody who doesn't, doesn't have experience, and someone else that doesn't have experience. They may have no experience, but I've never even attempted or thought about doing anything like that, but that might be the one up that you have on them. So that's another thing, because what another thing I noticed is that um, when you're going for certain roles, it, it's not dependent about what skills you have, it's dependent about what the skills of the other people in the interview pool on that day are, have as well. So if you're on a day where everybody is the same as you, nobody has actually any pharmaceutical experience, what's the differentiator between the four of you, for example? Let's just say you, you've you actually shown um, that attitude that you, you really want to get in, you've had a few experiences, a few one days here and there, shadowing where no one else has, that could be it. That could literally be it. And everything else can be taught to you because any job can really be taught to you let's be serious all you need is a bit of time and patience from the team that you're working with and they, they can help you bring you up to speed and then you just carry on as long as you you have the drive and the um attitude that you want to do it i don't think i would change anything if i'm being honest if i'm being 100 percent honest i don't think i would um, I don't regret any of the steps I've taken so far or been exposed to. I think they've all kind of helped um, in me finding what I don't like, what I do like, what I do want, what I don't want, what I appreciate, what I don't appreciate in either my life, in terms of quality of life or outside of work life, or in terms of the career or the job you, I want or the type of company I want to work for. So I have been quite appreciative and humble um, with the experience I've gathered. I'll be at We Night's launch event, you know. Um, I'll be there, available to talk to anyone that would, is happy to talk about anything. I really don't mind. Um, other than that, you can reach me on LinkedIn, Toby with an I, Adeyemi, Alpha, Delta, Echo, Yankee, Echo, Mike, Indigo, on LinkedIn. Um, it's quite a common surname, so there might be a lot of people that pop up, but um, you'll find me. <laughs> I'll be, you, you can find me through connecting with We Nights because that will be our mutual, yeah. That should be at least one mutual connection that we have. Um, outside of my day job, I, with a few other people, um, do something called YFMF, which is called Your Friends, My Friends. And it's centered around building bonds, um, giving people an opportunity to in expand their network and meet other people in very different ways and step out of their comfort zone. So a lot of it's around stepping out of your comfort zone and translating and building new skills that you can translate into either your professional life or your personal life. Um, a lot of people are always looking at new opportunities to meet new people and build on the, like, you know, the foundation of the skills that they already have. So it might be things like public speaking, it might be things like, um, you know, maybe you're naturally an introvert and you want to step out of that a little bit, step out of your shell and meet new people or whatever. And um, with YFMF, we provide opportunities to do that. So you can always um, follow us on Instagram at YFXMF um, and 
keep tuned 